And I believe we are live. Hello, friends and fellow gamers. I am that zero, and we are back with another uh, installment of the Plain Doctor series. It's been a it's been a real long time, but we have a new patient in the chair today. Uh, Jay, how you doing today, man? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing quite well. I haven't done one of these in a hot minute, so you know I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. Hello, friends and fellow gamers. Good. All right, so. Uh, I did things a little bit different this time. I actually got a list of some things to focus on early beforehand so that I could kind of prep. Hopefully have things be a little bit more focused. So um, things you noted that you wanted to go through as kind of some main points. One, who should you focus on? It's pretty obvious. Um, you said in general that um, you haven't played in a while. You came back for Attack on Titan. Um, you got all the new units and you've kind of been focusing on those. And you were wondering, A, is that smart? B, how you can do them better? C, what else do you got that you should also be focusing on? Pretty pretty fair yeah. assessment of that. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Um, another one is Farmer. You currently have uh, Phantom Thief Robin, as we can see here, um, as kind of your main. Um, but you have some other options, so we'll get into talking about that as well. And then what else do we have? Arcs as well. So what Ether to focus on, what things to level up, what kind of misses do you have or like opportunities mm -hmm. to improve that you're kind of not capitalizing on and also godforge because godforge is new since you played the game so that's a great yeah. topic and then just because it's always fun for me if we have time i'd like to touch very briefly on arena because i noticed you haven't really engaged much with it and i think that you could you have some very easy rewards sitting even if you don't like arena so sounds good all right so let's start out with units because that's always super duper fun so, um, yeah, I mean, you got you got the boy, you got the girl. Very nice. They're both top tier units. You're not going to regret having built them. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll put that at ease right away. They're both absolutely great. Um, my understanding is Mikasa is a bit better in Arena just because of her seven seconds of invulnerability. Um, but as far okay. as single target DPS goes, uh, Levi is the strongest in the game right now. Like, in a vacuum, in all perfect scenario, like, perfect cases, uh, everything lines up. He is the best in the game. But, even better than that, the only person he even competes with, really, in that regard, is Luxeus. Which, as it turns out, you have chilling down here. This, this is the other boy. So, this is somebody else that you can focus on that's absolutely worth you building. So, you can focus on the others first, um, but he's still going to be worth building anyway. Um, he's good in Arena, even though you might not need him with the other uh, people, but he does have some benefits over Levi um, in the sense that he could be a breaker. Um, his attacks persist, so if you find yourself getting flinched a lot, Levi can lose a lot of damage. Luxeus doesn't care at all. Um, so, yeah, eventually he'll be somebody to target as well. So, should I use my... Uh soul things on him your soul things um the um the mother souls yeah that okay um i would say only if i when it comes to things like mother souls or ethereum uh things like that those kind of semi-limited resources where like you'll get more of them but maybe you want to save them i'd say mm -hmm. if you are up against content that you feel like you're kind of roadblocked and you think that spending something will get you a power spike that's going to like push you over the edge and like trivialize that content um mm -hmm. like for instance if you're in tower of trials and you're stuck on like floor 50 or something and like elemental resistances are really fucking you okay well then go spend ethereum get trishula get over that hurdle if you're finding your damage isn't good enough and like levi doesn't quite have it and you need to give him like I don't know, Berserker and Weak Point Boost and Sword High Boost, and he only, and he's only has like two SC left, yeah, burn a bunch of Mother Souls to give him room for those skills. Or if you need Pirate's Feast or whatever. So, like, if you don't have room in the build for the unit to do what you need them to do, just mm -hmm. use it. Um, but I wouldn't just say, oh, this is a good unit, so just burn stuff on him. You might not even use them for a month, you know? Like, okay. who knows? So, like, when you need it, use it. That's, that's my advice there. Um... All right, so um, before I get into specific builds, I just want to run down the list super quick of things that I think is worth highlighting for units. Um, Prim is a solid support unit. Um, she comes with Honey Elixir baked in. Uh, Lena can use Honey Elixir very well, and I saw in your arcs you do have uh, the Final Fantasy Adventure arc, which is very good for your account. Um, 
absolutely top tier. Um, your units themselves, though, Mikasa and uh, Levi, should be able to use Honey Elixir themselves um, in a lot of cases. But if you want to, those are two supports that you can use um, as options. Um, obviously, Honey Elixir is in the is from which one? Uh, Final Fantasy Adventure. Oh, okay. we are this looking one. at this. So this in the arc section, I'm going to recommend leveling this up too because this just okay. this whole suite of skills is really nice. It's just a lot of good stuff in here. But Honey Elixir is the really big one. This is probably the most highly coveted skill in the entire game. So, oh, big win. Big win that you have this. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, accidentally awesome. Very good. Um, so anyway, the reason that this is significant is because regular attacks, especially in newer units, are just way better than they used to be back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, you could give this and Goddess Kiss um, for a total of 23 SC to Levi or Mikasa. They could use this on themselves, get 100% skill stocks, start murdering everything, and then if the fight hasn't ended yet, they could just do a few auto attacks to get over 200 MP and then fully recharge all their stocks instantly again. Oh, okay. Um, and it's time stop as well, which means like while you're um, actually in the animation to cast it, like you can't get smacked by enemies or anything. And it's a full heal too. So yeah, it's just really, really good. So Oh, oh very nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, back to units and just looking at some of these things. Um, I'm not going to touch too much on ones that are just like lightly usable because there's some things that have niche cases, but I think you're just looking for a broad approach. Um, mm -hmm. Your other farming option beside um, Phantom Thief Robin, uh, Yashumaru is top tier. I mm -hmm. would say like, you already have Phantom Thief. You are yeah. I'm just gonna say PTR. You already have PTR built, so for right now he's fine. Um, when you're looking to like completely maximize the potential of like farming and things like that, I think Yashumaru mm -hmm. blows him out of the water. Um, there's kind of two modes for thieves which is like when you're manually farming like controlling them and going through making sure that you're hitting everybody getting all your steals um or uh mage farming which is where you can basically convert a thief into a mage giving them high int stats and some spell they can cast to just like instantly clear something and the most common place that you would use that is like imperial guard commander 3 which i assume you know of i don't remember that hold on let me write that down imperial okay um, it's basically like the most common, it just generically the most universally good farm spot in the game. It's just the okay. default that everybody says to go to. I won't get into all the details on why, um, but basically it just gives you a ton of avenues of progress. So it's this right here on hard Imperial Guard Commander three. Um, okay. yeah, so this is really what you want to be auto farming anytime you're not playing the game. Um, gives you XP, gives you Zell, uh, gives you a bunch of blue and green crystals, so you just never need to worry about those ever again. Tomes, like pretty okay. much anything in here you'll just have an infinite supply of, um, as well as XP. You can gain unit souls. Um, it's it's really, really good. You gain a ton of Zell off of it. Like overnight, it's like, I don't know, like three mil or something if you run it for like eight hours. It's really good. Um, okay. So, yeah. If you weren't autoing Sounds that, familiar. yeah, auto run that now. So you want to get somebody that can quick clear that, um, which you normally would use a mage for. Um, eventually, you'll want to just build um, a farmer to do it, which you kind of have tools to do. So we'll get into that when I get over to the farmer section. Um, the other, the third farming option is actually Master Thief Robin, who was like really, really bad back in the day. He's kind of okay now um, because uh, <laughs> he was buffed. And so when he has his um, steal skill maxed out, he gets a 35% chance to steal on kill, which means as a mage farmer, he's premium. It's really, really good. Oh. Um, but Yashumaru gets a 30% chance at max um, while being really good at manually farming as well. And while also having insta-kill viability if you're going against really damaged spongy enemies in certain content. So overall, I think for like the whole package, Yashumaru is just a really really good investment so okay. i highly recommend leveling him up at some point um the other benefit you can gain from master thief robin is um he can be a really really good ailment support too which means like being able to um force stun and blind and illness onto enemies um which mm -hmm. blind and stun especially are like the really really big deals 
And I don't know if you actually have him built out, but I'm pretty sure he gets blind and stun reach search innate, which, like, almost nobody else has except for, like, one limited unit that's really, really good. So, I do think, since you don't have any other ailment spammers, eventually he's probably worth building, but not a high priority. But, okay. yeah, so... Called Bolt Robins while eventually doing Yashimaru. Yeah, I, I would say, unfortunately, Master Thief Robin, in my opinion, is the lowest of the three. He okay. just, he's good at manual farming. I don't think he's very good at anything else. Whereas the other so, ones kind of have sub roles they can do. Okay, so finish maxing out PTR and then work on Yashu when I, have, when I can. Yeah, I would say as far as like maxing him, just like get his, his crit stuff. Like make sure he has his crit all the way up and just get the passives. Like that's, that's really the big thing. So just get this final bit and extort um, mm -hmm. and then use him for a while. Okay, um, let's see, back into here, browsing through some of these things. I already said Luke Zayas. And should I be using him in multiplayer, too? Um, so, in general, I don't think that it's really that worthwhile in multiplayer, because content is just harder. Um, so, okay. like, generally the big, the drops you care about in multiplayer is the really rare ones, which only drop on the boss wave. So mm -hmm. what you usually want to do is just run your biggest DPS um, to just quick clear mm -hmm. stuff and then just run Beast Hunter at level 10. Okay. So it looks like you've already progressed this a bit. So just watch mm -hmm. out for any opportunities to bump this up and you just put this on your carry um, or run multiplayer with somebody who is running a level 10 one and just have them do it on the boss wave. And like you've basically got all the value that you need out of a farmer. For the most part. Okay. Like, if you need the lower level materials, you could go into multiplayer and run a farmer. I think Yashimaru probably does far better than PTR. His damage potential is just a lot higher. Mm -hmm. And I think he yeah. quick clears quicker. He can insta-kill stuff while having a higher chance to steal. So, like, if you're going to run a farmer, I would say Yashimaru also wins there in general. Okay. So, um, But usually you're just going to run lots of damage and then Beast Hunter if you really want to, like, maximize your drops. But, like... Even just completing a multiplayer match successfully is way better than, like, anything you would have been running before with, like, a farming unit. Just because, like, the end of uh, match drops, you get drops for everybody in your multiplayer lobby, and they all have mm -hmm. a chance at being rare drops. And then you okay, get... so then better than running solo? You definitely... If, you, if there's multiplayer available, you want to do multiplayer. Like, okay. pretty much always. The only exception, really, is if there's special events going, which is uh, usually on this special, like, event island here. Mm -hmm. um, like, you have, I, you didn't come back for Attack on Titan, right? So you haven't seen anything else, any of the other events that came before this? No, I think right? I stopped right at Dr. Stone. Okay. So the only other uh, place is, like, we've had this island come back. In, like, the last six months, they've been using this island a lot for events, and they just sort of put slight tweaks on it. Um, but there's mm -hmm. one stage that comes in sometimes, which is limit break bosses, um, shows up like in here or something. Um, those ones you can run solo, and it's the same types of drops as you get from running multiplayer, but it's like half mm -hmm. the cost and triple the drop rate. But it's only mm -hmm. while that event island is up and like that special thing. So like in that unique case, that's when you would take somebody like Yashimaru in, and you have him running to steal and maybe like a DPS to kill the final boss quicker or something, and you could just solo through this stuff and you just rake in the loot it's really really good okay um otherwise yeah general rule of thumb just play multiplayer it's really good okay so all right let's see here um other units so as far as like standard units i don't think there's anything else really worth me highlighting um i mm -hmm. do want to point out two monster units though um dxr okay. and gobble are both super duper good um oh, okay so DXR can serve a similar role to what I mentioned with um, Master Thief Robin, which is being an ailment applier. Um, basically, this dude's kit sucks. It's really bad. But <laughs> but he has a few unique things about him that's super good, um, which is um, his S3 ability has like the highest break in the game. So if you use Honey Elixir on him, um, you can mm -hmm. you can break stuff easily, but more importantly his auto attack has like an AoE and lots of hits And so you can give him weapons and um, researches that let him have a chance to apply ailments and He can do that really really well And there's an endgame boss fight where you can only use monster units and he's an MVP in that fight 
Wow. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, and similar, similarly, Gobble, too, um, his S3, is, he basically drops a bomb, and it's just really silly. One, it's also some of the highest break in the game. He gets, like, three stocks of it at base, which is really good with Honey Elixir, which you have, which is awesome. Um, and then also the unique thing about it is if you're using insta-kill mechanics, like the, there's some things like Yashimaru has some, uh, there's an art called Moonlit Murder that has it. There's some weapons that say chance to insta-kill. Uh, there's a skill called Death God. So there's all these ways you could potentially like insta-kill things with a lot of health. Well, mm -hmm. on the boss wave, those things are nullified. Like nothing can in be insta-killed on a boss wave. So all the mobs and things, you just have to kill outright. For some <laughs> reason, his S3, um... Uh, also has a chance to insta-kill, but he gets around the boss wave um, invulnerability. So so he can insta-kill sub-bosses in the boss fight, and it's really gross and really awesome. So he has niche case, and again, he's also a super good unit for that uh, boss fight eventually down the road, where you can only use monster units. So, yeah. Those future adds, um, not super important right now, but mm -hmm. still, down the road, good stuff. All right, good. let's go into some unit stuff. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull up what you currently have on Levi. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say the stuff that I hate and the stuff that I'd replace it with. Fair? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Um, so quick question. Have you have you beaten Tower of Trials, like up to floor 80 already? No. Or no? So, um, okay. All right. I mean, I, I came back for Attack on Titan. Charles was in, was was up again, right? So I okay, cool. When I kind of skipped most days because I wasn't sure what I was doing again, and then I kind of put a hodgepodge team together, and so I've been doing it for the past couple of days and got to forty three, forty five ish today. I think okay, that's how cool. Far as I got. Cool. Um, well, I think the next time it comes around. Very high likelihood you will be able to at least get to eighty, which will get you okay. the, which will get you a special arc out of there. Um, mm -hmm. It gives you access to a skill called HP plus two. Um, it's on most units is the most efficient way to bump your HP. So okay, um, if you need to be a little tankier, HP plus two, HP up max, just a good solid chunk of HP if you need it. Um, this is something else that has probably changed a lot since the last time you were in the game. Mm -hmm. Usually. Raw stats just don't matter much. Like like spending SC on this type of stuff, we just don't mm -hmm. care. Cause like units oh, ba okay. units base stats are really high now. Um, mm -hmm. So like it's just really hard diminishing returns for what we get for the amount that we spend. So and further, we have like um, we have lots of damage multiplying skills in the game now. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. So one, um, just in general, if you're not hitting damage cap. Uh, against a certain boss obviously make sure you're using slayers it looks like you're at least teaching all of them or many of them so i assume you know special boost slayer matching is a thing mm -hmm. okay cool I, i've never really used utilized that too effectively. okay okay because content changes and i i forget to change it or you yeah know, that's I, fine I that's fine the main that. yeah the main thing to note is like if you if you have a really hard fight like you're facing a boss fight a uh, like an end game fight for the first time just make mm -hmm. sure you have the appropriate slayer and special boost on whatever your dps units are um because it's literally a hundred percent damage boost on, multiplied on top of whatever other damage boosts you have Okay. So like it okay, is so it is the single the yeah, it's the single most efficient way to boost your damage. So like if you're struggling to hit cap, make sure you're using slayers. It's massive. How do I know if I'm hitting cap? Um so if you look at uh your individual unit, it will say mm -hmm. all the bonuses that you get. Usually the best indicator is if your damage numbers end in 999 or okay. or 99 because there's like weird 100 point cap raises in the game for like wards and random things now, but Either way, usually if your damage numbers are ending in nine nine, it's probably because you're hitting your artificial ceiling. Um, okay. That's that's for that particular unit. So um, every unit's a little bit different just because they all have passives that boost it. Um, uh, Levi has mm -hmm. snap blades and uh, and traits and all sorts of other stuff. Mikasa too. Just pretty much everybody has damage cap raises. But right. Yeah. So that's what you're kind of looking for. Um, okay. okay. Other stuff to look for. So. I see you're running crit. I think crit works because it sounds like you're probably not actually hitting damage cap very much as is. So crit works for them. Eventually, when you can get your raw damage multipliers up, 
Um, crit, at least on somebody like Levi, since he doesn't come with any crit stuff innately, he's not really going to need crit anymore because you can just make all of your white numbers hit cap. And that's oh. that's kind of the meta these days, which is like you just make your units so powerful that their neutral damage is capping and you don't need to worry about crits anymore. So like the wow. only thing you would really need crit for, I would say, is you could run something like um, fast critical because it's efficient, fast menace to, to uh, increase your mind a bit. Um, run. Well, what does mine have to do with crit? Um, so that will come in for Proud Force. Your critical hits recover HP. Uh huh. The HP recovered oh. is based on your mind stat. So oh, when you're only okay. spending two SC for twenty percent boost, it's a pretty uh, significant amount. Um, but yeah, so like, if you just wanted to sustain and have like some passive sustain, you could add a very small kit package with. Crit up two as well because this is just super efficient compared to the other two. So you could do crit up two, proud force, and then fast medis, fast critical, and then there's a different skill called dusk. Oh, you have dusk on, so you can do that too. Um, okay. If you don't, yeah. if you're not running sharp eyes, if you're running sharp eyes, then this skill won't work because it uses all your MP. But if you can hit damage uh -huh. cap without sharp eyes, you could just stay topped up, and then you just get another extra twenty percent to your mind, which for as cheap as it is, is really efficient. So, okay. so yeah, flat stat boost we don't really like, but when we're getting really, really big, chunky conditional boosts, um, then it could be helpful, because um, then that all plays into whatever your innate is, um, can be really good. So, um, tranquility too, if you're going for the proud force build, because this is another twenty percent when you're weak, which is when you want your proud force to be healing you more. So, mm, okay. yeah. Um, let's see here. Other stuff for damage. Um, in general, I'd usually be running Pose of Glory, like, for sure, on any physical DPS. So, okay. you have it taught to him. It's just, it helps you, like, just keep chaining abilities, which is really great. Um, mm -hmm. Pirate Feast, he doesn't need quite as much, because he has Ale of Glory and Quick Trigger, but it's still just super duper good. So, mm -hmm. um, you never go wrong with Pirate Feast on pretty much any physical DPS. Um, a lot of this advice also goes for Mikasa, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. It's all kind of the same thing. Um, backstab, yeah. definitely put on Backstab. So, like, if you're not hitting damage cap, these two skills mm -hmm. are some of the quickest ways to hit damage cap. Just, okay. if you're behind an enemy, that's plus 80% damage. Mm -hmm. Which is just stupid good. Um, another way to boost your damage is uh, Terramelth. This is where the ailment appliers come into play. You could run one mm -hmm. unit as an ailment applier, either DXR or uh, MTR, and then if they just apply stun or blind or something, like one thing to them, flat 20% increase. And then on mm -hmm. an arc you have, there's Terramelth 2. You can stack that for 6SC, giving you another 30. So that's 50% more if they have an ailment mm -hmm. on them. So, like, oh, well. again, these big percentage boosts to flat damage, that's how you hit your damage caps. I see. You just stack all of that crap up. Um, yeah, again, raw stats in general, Holy Aura is just, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, Holy Aura is bad now? It's really, honestly, I don't think it was very good before either. Just because, okay. like, it's only 25% extra onto your stats. So, like, I think back in the day, if we had, like, literally nothing else to put on, like, <laughs> it technically did something because stats kind of mattered, you know? Um, but that was kind of it. So, yeah. Um, by today's standards, it's, like... Omega trash tier. It'd have to be like 4SC to be worthwhile, I think. Um, so yeah, not very good. Um, skill charges, yeah, skill charges are obviously good. If you do Pirate Feast, though, you could probably get away with just running skill charge 1 or nothing, and you're probably okay. fine. Um, Combo Master 2, great, but that comes with him, obviously. Um, there's an arc where you can get giant killing. Uh, that's another thing you can add. Um, also, Berserker. Um, is on an arc. I'll have to check and see if you have it. I don't remember for sure, but yeah. I think I didn't level it up. I think I remember having it. I forget what it does, though. Okay. Um, another thing that you're missing, like a huge miss, is um, uh, Sword Mega Boost. And also you'll need Dual Wield, which is in his kit. You just don't have him maxed out yet, but he gets Dual Wield for free, so you obviously want to be Dual Wielding. Okay. But, yeah. I thought Dual Wield was that... Is, oh, I think it doesn't cover that. What? But oh, true. true. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I didn't see it because it's a different color. Threw me off. I apologize. Yeah. See, no it's, it's already <laughs> online. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, sword high boost as well. You really want to be hitting your uh, high boosts on people. Um, okay. It's just I more percentage increase. That What's that? 
I don't know if I have sword uh, high you, boost. You sure do. You just have to level up the arc, which is in the arc okay. section. So we'll get to there. So Sounds you're good. you're good. You are good. Um, yeah, you've got a nice selection of stuff uh, to work with, which is really great. Um, and you can also mix and match weapon types as well. Um, so for instance, I see you wailed out and got his paid gear. So very dope. Cool. Mm -hmm. So obviously you could just leave that on him. Um, for the other weapon, I would do something like teach um, spear equip which I highly doubt you already have. No, you do. You no. totally do. Oh, Nice. Um, okay. I would run this. Earthly Staff Raffia. Super top tier. You can eventually God Forge it, make it even better. But like, Earth oh, Damage, cool. flat plus 20%. Really good. Oh, nice. So yeah, basically, <laughs> so these two also means that you're on double Earth Element, and with all the, um, with like him having innate Earth Boosts, means that your auto attacks are going to hit harder, which means if you decide to run something like Honey Elixir and Goddess Kiss on him, it's going to be easier to get that MP back because they're just going to be hitting harder because he's getting all that damage boost going into his regular attacks too. Nice. So um, the other option is, especially if you're in multiplayer and you just want to be lazy, there's, a there's I don't know, maybe like 20-30% of the enemies have a decent amount of earth resistance. And if that's the case, um, you might not be able to hit Cap as easy. In which case, mm -hmm. you just do the classic switch over to Trishula. Trishula, okay. Yeah, and then you just ignore those resistances. So just swap between this and Trishula, depending on what Levi's fighting, and you should be good to go. Okay. Um, and I can send you some of my notes as well. I just sort of roughly threw them into a notepad. I'm not going to actually mess with your builds here. I'll back out. Um, okay. Okay, so let's see. Do, do, do. Um, only note specifically for Mikasa that I had um was to give her a particular bow which is out of the god forge um so probably okay. replacing snap blade um with a particular bow and then you run heaven star lord on here okay um basically unlike levi who doesn't who isn't really built for crits she is mm -hmm. like a super crit focused character so um the bow that i'll tell you it has five percent crit rate when you like max it out in the God Forge, it gives you 8% crit rate. And then this art gives you 10% more if you have a bow equip. So the two of those gives you 18. Additionally, um, once you are hitting damage cap, the only ways to push your damage further beyond is by having like an arc that's going to, um, you know, say, oh, increase thunder uh, damage cap or increase uh, your physical damage cap or whatever, which are not super common. They're usually you are rarity which just the, the odds of getting some are just not super likely they're very rare um but the other way is with pursuit attacks so this says um grants an extra attack for each critical extra attack just means whenever it procs you just flat out do extra damage on top of whatever damage you're dealing so if you crit mm -hmm. for 30k this is going to give you 25 percent extra damage so take 25 percent of 30k free extra damage on top of that for every single critical Oh, okay. So it just helps to push you further beyond uh, her limits and makes her more consistent on hitting those crits too. So it's really good. Does, um, um, don't Im impact th th that does that. Too, it, right? it is a similar. Worth it? it is a similar mechanic um, mm -hmm. where it does pursuit attacks. It's the same uh, same type of thing, but that's only for regular attacks. And there's oh. uh, and there's almost no units that use regular attacks as like your main form of DPS. So, okay. like, they're generally not worth the SC to run on most That's units. Right. So, okay. yeah. Um, all right, let's see here. Doo, doo, doo. I'm just checking chat to see if anybody else had anything to throw in. Nah, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So, anyway. Um, yeah, I think... That's pretty much it for that. Do you have any other specific questions on Levi or Mikasa? Uh... I don't think so. So Zuglas and Devon, those guys are kind of worthless now, right? I would rate them as that, yes. Um, <laughs> another thing you can do is um, there is a global tier list that the community put together. Um, mm -hmm. So if you've never seen it, you can kind of use that to sort of filter through your units and take a look at what's good or what's not. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, almost everything from, like, year and a half and further behind Um is generally pretty trash with only a few exceptions. Like, mm -hmm. if you have Honey Elixir, Lena's really good because she can do some broken things with it. Um, okay. But you don't necessarily... So Lena's still worth it. 
What's that? Yeah. Um, but like, you don't necessarily need her for it. There might be specific fights where you'll want her to do that. So like somewhere down the road, you could build her and then she could be really abusive with that. Um, mm -hmm. I won't get into that now. We could talk about it down the road if you end up getting to that point. Um, okay. But yeah, or like Shin's really bad, but like technically if you set things up just right, he could be made to be like a solo DPS in Arena. Because things are silly in Arena sometimes. But, like, in general, he's really, really bad. So, okay. a whole lot of that. Like, most of these units really bad. Um, yeah. Lilibet is another one where, like, she's not that great on her nose, but she sort of has some hidden stuff that's really good. Her Goddess Kiss procs can be pretty good, so she can also use Honey Elixir. And then she's got this really goofy thing where if you press S... If you use her S2, which is like a Reign of Arrows, you know, classic Ranger thing... And then you swap to a different unit. When the hits from this skill come in, for some reason it charges the unit that's currently active. So you can use her to quickly charge an alt of a unit if you want to by just spamming S2s and swapping back to a unit. So, like, she's got really niche case scenario use that's really good sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, little things like that. All right, I digress. Uh, let's pop back over to... Um, do, do, do. Okay. So let's do arcs i think arcs yeah okay. all right so arcs um ether rewards we'll start with that um mm -hmm. i would say resistor of titans is a solid one to get um it's just a really good generic damage boost to help you hit those numbers it's got okay. uh, good base strength to add to a unit to go with their other stuff um and then the most important is extra movement speed physical damage boost to bosses really really nice um yeah so that's a good one to ether farm um saint marius this is specifically for levi i would say it's still probably low priority compared to the other one um but it's an option um does a little extra earth damage to just help hit cap a little easier and then you have like a 20 percent chance to recover one percent of the hp the damage that you deal is hp so like this can help okay. him to slightly sustain passively if you're just mm -hmm. doing like a light crit build with um uh, proud force to be able to sustain that um uh that does remind me something else you can do for both mikasa and levi is if you wanted to like not have to build into crit for levi to sustain an option you have is where is it um moon saber since regular attacks are good now mm -hmm. this is really really good now um oh, okay so oh right i was going to go through your levi and tell you other things that i didn't like um i believe you had blood force on him mm -hmm. yeah so blood force is basically just a really really bad moon saber <laughs> okay so basically it's like um i think it's like a 20 percent chance or maybe a 10 percent chance i don't know it's i'll just say 20 percent chance that your regular attacks on each hit could heal you 20 percent of the damage dealt um mm. which is like okay so it's rng based which really sucks um but moon saber if you teach it to him is just a spell you have to upkeep on yourself every 40 seconds so you cast it for like i don't know 16 mp or something but then you get a 40 second buff that says all regular attack damage you do heals you for 20% of the damage. Oh, nice. So when your regular attacks are hitting stupid numbers, you, it's basically just full heals whenever you mm -hmm. need them on demand. So and you have to manually do that, right? Because the AI will never use it. Yeah, well, it's the, yeah, the spell. Yeah, the spell mm -hmm. you'd have to cast on yourself. I mean, I have seen it cast it before, but I don't know the exact AI logic behind when it wants to prioritize it. So... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, but it can happen because um, I've seen supports throw it on other units and stuff like just spam it to put it on everybody in the party, which sometimes just doesn't make much sense. But yeah, <laughs> if you're just looking to auto farm with him, like if you're just auto playing and just like mindlessly doing stuff, um, just mm -hmm. do like proud force or something just because mm -hmm. it's just going to be easier to passively sustain. But okay. if you need some burst heals, it's there. Um, let's see other uh, ether rewards for you to work on. Stone World. It's only an SR, um, but this is uh, top tier for sure. Um, okay. Just makes you immune to fainting, which is really okay. good. You, just, you can just avoid that mechanic entirely. Which reminds me, when I was talking about units for you to focus on, I mm -hmm. talked about um, Theria or uh, Alina and Prim could be some decent support options. Like I always recommend having at least one support. Mm -hmm. um, 
Arguably the best support in the game is Spirit Maiden Theria. It's the shift form of the, the base Theria. Um, mm -hmm. If you didn't know, we're getting a female unit selector in the next event that comes out tonight. Right. That's tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, based on your account, you should absolutely grind out whatever you need to to get the last 15k you need to hit that pity and go get yourself an SM Theria. Okay. Wait, that grind, is... Grind what pity? What's that? I, I have a grind what pity. Oh, oh, you oh as, the... in, as in just go get gems. I guarantee you have okay. plenty of story to complete. Yeah, yeah. I'm so ju that. just go plow through story in the next week or two, like just before the mm -hmm. selector goes away. It should be here two, maybe three weeks, possibly. I would guess only two. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, go get enough to hit 30k. It's absolutely worth it to get her, and you might get some other fun tools along the way too. Okay. So yeah, Esmetheria is top tier, and she will definitely be in your party for a long time, considering you don't really have other super good um, support options. Yeah. So. Um, with that said, when you have her, this becomes less valuable. You kind of only need it if she's not in your party, because she basically gives your whole party faint immunity. <laughs> amongst, okay. like, amongst a ton of other great shit, she kind of becomes god mode, um, in, in some respects. Um, but yeah. So, when you get her, because mm -hmm. you should, um, she will be a high focus as well. You don't have to, like, build her a specific way just like mm -hmm. fill out her skill board and like at base she's really busted like she comes with pretty much everything she possibly needs and then like as far as build wise it's just kind of whatever you want to give her you can give her some basic debuffs and things like that um maybe some survivability but at base she's an insane support unit um she heals she buffs everybody to keep them alive uh it's it's really great so definitely do that okay so um all right that's kind of it for ether stuff. Um, everything else mm -hmm. was just like kind of fine. You sort of farmed the ether on main crap that I would care about. Um, mm -hmm. So like you, you've obviously been doing good with whatever auto farming you're doing at the very least. Um, so things that you should level up though, um, mm -hmm. just for like using and such. We are looking at blah 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 blah. Um, okay, so. Uh, Divine Beast Hunter, this is worth leveling because God Slayer is just really great to have. It's good in Arena. Okay. Um, it's also just good when you need it for boss fights. Uh, Levi especially, it'll help his damage against one of the God Forge bosses. So, yeah, just getting that available on your account. Very, very nice. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, I mentioned... So, Sword of Corpses, this is where your Sword mm -hmm. High Boost is. So, I would say oh. this, is, this is mega high priority. This is just okay. an auto-include on Levi... I don't know if Mikasa comes with it. If not, she automatically gets that too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, do that. That's really, really great. Um, uh, let's see here. St. Marius as well. Uh, weak point boost is one of the most efficient damage boosts in the game. Basically, if somebody's weak to your element, you just get a flat 30% mm -hmm. increase to your physical damage. So okay. if Levi's fighting something weak to Earth or Mikasa's fighting something weak to uh, Thunder... They're doing a lot more damage. Nice. Okay. Sounds good. Good stuff. And the final one I'd recommend upgrading is Ghost Hime. Um, right. This one in Arena is really nice. Um, basically, when it's maxed out at Wave Start, you put something called Spirit Riot on all your enemies, which basically just cuts all their healing in half. So if oh, they have something like, oh, when your HP gets low, full heal or something, instead they only half heal. Or if they have a healer oh. spamming heal magic, it heals half as much, which means they need oh. to burn twice as much MP to sustain. Um, is that a spell or is that a... It's that, so it's a spell you can teach, but I've never mm -hmm. used it. Um, it becomes a fast effect, basically just a wave start effect, when the arc is equipped to a unit. So oh, okay, wave cool. so yeah so basically wave start it infects every one of your enemies with that spell. Nice. So okay. yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and then also it gives you access to Terra Melt too, which like mm -hmm. I said, if you ever get ailment support in your team, um, that's just another really good way to boost your damage because again, flat thirty percent increase. And worth noting, um, these skills when you're looking through them, 
whatever they literally say is what they mean. So when this says damage to enemies, that means all damage. That means your alt will be better. If somebody's a magic user, magic will be better. Physical is better. Your regular attacks. If you have an arc that does damage, which you don't on your account right now, but there's some arcs that do damage, it buffs that damage too. Um, other things might just say earth damage is increased. Others might specifically say earth physical damage. So like... Just pay attention to that when you're looking for your bonuses and things, um, just to make okay. sure they're actually affecting what you care about. Um, that's usually that usually helps indicate as to why things are um, a particular SC cost. Because some things are just okay. really stupid expensive, and some things are surprisingly cheap. And usually it's just because they target they're either really really niche or really broad, and that just like scales up their cost more or less. So yeah. So for arcs. Um, I would say those are the main ones that I would focus mm -hmm. on. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Did you have any questions on arcs at all? Um, no. Oops, sounds good okay, so far. Cool. Um, oh, honorable mention. I, I didn't highlight it that much just because mm -hmm. I'm just going to assume you're getting Esmetheria because you can. Um, if you <laughs> didn't have her, she already has auto advanced magic circles, which is um, just a constant 2% max MP every six seconds. If you mm -hmm. don't, if you have a support though that doesn't have that effect, um, mm -hmm. this is just by default the best robe to put on them because it gives you auto advanced magic circles passively. Uh, like that's what okay. this says. So like this won't stack with it, but it gives you that effect when you don't have it, which is just a really good amount of sustain on a okay. unit. So just a good tool to have eventually. Again, super low priority because your account doesn't really care right now. But okay. honorable mention nonetheless. Okay. okay. Uh, Godforge, I believe, is next. Mm -hmm. um, so, Godforge is cool. Um, let's see here. So, you'll get access to more things as you level up your alchemy. So, okay. it, so what you want to do um, is basically, one, um, use this as much as you need to for quality of life in general. So, like, if you're just missing something, just come mm -hmm. craft it with alchemy. Okay. Um, like, obviously, it converts down at, like, a slightly bad rate, but, like, it's quality of life. So when you have a surplus of stuff, it works out mm -hmm. really well. So, like, when you're auto-farming Imperial Guard Commander 3, and you basically have infinite blues and greens, <laughs> you can just mm -hmm. convert all your blues and greens over to reds and purples mm -hmm. to get the things you need. And then when you get your alchemy rank up to, like, 8, you can craft up to 5 basic clusters a day at, oh, wow. at like, a 30 to 1 crystal rate. Um, so wow. then you could craft five red and five purple every day and five rainbows every day if you had enough things for it. And if you're auto farming IGC three, um, you should have plenty. Uh, oh, crap. Okay. yeah. So <laughs> for your purposes now, basically just start converting some of this stuff. Like you have a ton of crystals. Cool. Just come in here and just like divide a bunch. And like every time you okay. divide large chunks, you're going to keep getting XP. The more XP you get um or the more levels you get the more it unlocks in here so like you'll have the opportunity to like convert um fragmite crystals into beast meat like those really low level materials and then you can start just consuming those to gain xp and you just want to get this leveled up the max level is 10 so okay um yeah every single level gives you access to more stuff um whether it's like being able to enhance stuff past a certain point or unlocking things in this quality of life thing or unlocking more things in godforge so, okay. um, this is your priority one, in my opinion, um, probably. I, I, I saw that I could I mean, well, that, so I start picking things, to, but then I'm getting yeah. to level 40, it seems really hard. Yeah, so you don't, okay, so first of all, oh, yeah, so you're saying this, getting this one to 40. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really hard because you don't have an income for um, the shards yet, which is one of the things you asked about. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, another thing worth noting, I guess, um, you're still going to want this, especially because like you can put it on Luxeus. So when you eventually mm -hmm. build him, you just run this and Trish, and that's generally what people do because it's just like lazy good damage. Like okay. he's, it just gets around all resistances. It boosts his damage. It's super good. You can give him the, a sword the high boost. Version? What's that? The pure version. The pure, yeah, the pure version, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Basically, we're taking the worst weapon in the game and crafting it into one of the best. Right. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's something that'll be good. If you ever get a magic user, this is the first thing you craft. This is really, really good. But you don't have one right now. And you also asked about mages in general, um, if it's worth like building Lily. 
I would say don't sweat it. Like, you don't really need a mage that much. Um, there's very okay. niche cases where, like, things are physical damage immune, and there's ways around that. So we can, we can talk about that as well. But, okay. yeah, so um, upgrade materials. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so get your alchemy level up. That's step number one. Uh, mm -hmm. Step number two, um, you need to get shards. So where do you get shards? Um, well, it's really hard, as you'll see here. Oh, hey, where, where, do, we, where do we get these? Uh, okay, so two places. One is tours, which is not going to have good yields right away. Tours uh -huh. is a hella long grind, and there's no way around it. Um, okay. So basically, it looks like these aren't even running. Um, unfortunate. Yeah. It looks like you at least tried a little bit. Um, so I the last one, I, get, yeah. I, I, I have to take time to look up which ones are not soldiers and whatever. Sure, yeah. So just keep slowly yeah. working through that. That's fine. Um, but basically, once you get up to these final two, you really start seeing good returns on doing runs, and this final one especially is really, really good. It's probably going to take you months to get up to there, just because you already know how slow this grind is. It, okay. Yeah, it's just a thing. So just do it passively. Don't kill yourself, like, trying to super-duper min-max it. Just make sure you're always running tours and, like, lightly trying, and eventually you'll get there as long as you stick with the game. And the payoff okay. is worth it, though, so I'll just say that. Um... It becomes a really good source of, like, um, mid-level uh, enhancement materials, as well as free souls and zell and XP and AP for teaching skills, and most importantly, the weapon and armor shards. Okay. For you, the main thing that you're going to look for um, is this, which is really good for you. You're okay. sitting on over 600,000 of these? Great. Hmm. Um, so what you're going to want to do is basically... Sometimes we get a super friend gotcha, and I'm guessing the update to my tonight might bring that with it. If not, the next event definitely should. Um, okay. So you'll see right here, there's a weapon shard. These are the things you need. That's mm -hmm. technically in the drop pool, but rates are just really garbage by default. So you're just not going to get great stuff. When the okay. super friend gotcha starts, you just mass spend all of this all okay. of it you're going to get a ton of mega clusters to max out your units you're going to get a ton, ton of regular clusters and you're going to get probably easily enough shards to craft pure blade or like at least okay. one like at least one god forge that you want um mm -hmm. i think when somebody else recently came back to the game they were sitting on like 300k and they said it was enough to make pure blade cool so that by itself is going to be really great the fact that you haven't just like wasted these away and you just sort of been sitting on them so mm -hmm. that's great um that's gonna help you out a lot so that's a good place and early on that's just that's gonna be the place for it um sometimes we also get a training field that shows up here and mm -hmm. you can only run it like five times a day you want to run your thief unit through that so run okay. master thief robin or yashimaru um whoever's built in your best thief at the time you run them through there that collects a whole bunch of shards too do it when you can those are pretty rare though we only get those like i don't know several times a year maybe it's just, they they just don't pop up that often. But when they're there, make sure to hit them. Because um, obviously, people be real hungry for shards. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and I can't look at it right now because your alchemy is not high enough. But the other uh, high important thing, like I said, is the Godforge bow. Um, it's called Experion. You can look mm -hmm. it up. Um, are you familiar with Last Claudia Goldmine? Goldmine, no. Okay, cool. Um, remind me after this, I'll DM you. Um, okay. It's, it's basically like a super encyclopedia site for like a whole bunch of stuff in this game. A legend of the community, Lake, um, manages a whole bunch of like data mined info and stuff. And he, he makes really awesome resources that basically makes this game playable. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that should help you out a lot with some basic questions for like looking for what things you can equip and like what arcs do what and what things you can look for or hunt for or whatever. So... That'd be good. Um, beautiful. Um, ba -ba -ba. Is there anything that I missed here? I know I bounced around a little bit. Do you have more questions in the air? Um, I noticed when we were doing like this, the unit skills, there's a TS with a circle. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, so it's really, really bad UI, basically. So <laughs> do you remember back in the day... Um, when, like, you use certain magic and, like, it would freeze time. Mm-hmm.
basically they removed freezing time from like 99% of things in the game, spells specifically. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. before, basically they just use that to mark if this is not time stop. So <sighs> there's a mark on things that used to be time stop to indicate that it's not time stop, but nothing else also time stops, so it doesn't make sense. But they're starting to use new phrasing and haven't updated any UI yet where they're calling things stackable or non-stackable magic. Or like stacking or non-stacking. So stacking magic is like lightning gauge, which is like you can cast it, targets an enemy, makes like a column of lightning, and you can cast multiple in a row and they'll, like, they'll persist and stack on top of each other. Non-stacking okay. is like a biscuit, blizzard. Uh, things like that where like it does a big animation it takes up the entire screen and you can't cast any other big spells like that so certain spells take up what i call the cast space mm -hmm. um and basically until they conclude you can't cast another thing that does that and they've decided to call them stacking or non-stacking you can find them by seeing <laughs> crossed out ts because yeah <laughs> great so so, so cross out tm means non-stacking means non-stacking yes okay <laughs> it makes perfect sense i hope they change that eventually but yeah so that's what that is confusing all right yes thank you um yeah really great good stuff very nice um okay arena super duper quick i don't have a ton of time to talk on it um actually hold on one sec um i will be with you in a moment got a Check with my wife something real quick. Do 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 do. I'm a professional. Um... Okay, cool. Um, so, in here. A um, mm -hmm. few things that we can do. Um, Is Christmas theory worth it all? <laughs> um, I, okay, so, so in general, <laughs> probably not a ton, but like it doesn't hurt to have a caster that can just like simply CC the battlefield by just like mm -hmm. knocking people around. So to do that, though, you're not really set up to do that. So the first okay. thing you'd want, your strategy, switch this over to use light magic. Then as soon mm -hmm. as she has MP for it, she's going to use light magic. Great. Um, main thing she'll want to use, you don't care about damage. Sh Shining Zok, no go. Galaxy, though, okay. really cheap, really great. Um, she doesn't need any of these. She's not going to use them anyway, but on the off chance she wants to cast them, we're just going to remove those. Okay. Yeah. Um, that seems pretty good. Um, when you get SM Theria, you could mm -hmm. just use her in here as like your healer, mm -hmm. and you won't really have to worry about too much other stuff. Um, I'm not really going to care too much about these. I don't think any of this really matters for you. Um, high level magic chant. Okay. Um, put Rad Moon on her. Actually, hold on. Um, Cultist Pendant. Rad Moon. Just to make sure. Just to, just to make sure that you're casting decently well enough. Um, out of curiosity. No, okay. I was just trying to see if you had Mummy Suit, which gives you a free revive, which is pretty cool. Cool, so now she can insta cast Blizzard, so she's automatically a million percent better on your team than she was before. So cool. Cool. Um, yeah, the other thing that'll really help you is you want to get Spell Render. You're going to just be easily slapping people. Lucky for you, you're ready to get it. So... Mm -hmm. um, is that something you were intentionally working towards? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I'm assuming it's a formation? Yeah, okay, cool. We're gonna do something here. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly how good your team is, but hey, it should easy clap this person. Yeah. <laughs> this bot. Yeah, low enough in the rankings to, you know, fight those. <laughs> yes, you should be able to auto-fight through a lot of rankings, but eventually you'll need to kind of sort of try. Mm -hmm. Probably not that much, though. Oh, you don't even have, like, a build on these guys. They're not using, like, skill charges or anything. Rough. Oh, is, this, is it separate than... The... Yes, it is separate. This is a different loadout set. So you probably have oh. to equip them with stuff. Either way, yeah. we're going against bots, so cool. Yeah, yeah that, that threw me for a loop in the tower, too. I was like... Yep, 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 yep. I'm going to have those spells. And, like, like okay, oh, cool. I did the gate and... 
put stuff on them. I was like, ah. So I'm, I'm going to do a total of three matches here. Here's one. And we're just going to show mm -hmm. a quick progression. All right. So this is a thing. Very cool. Max damage, 155. Big baller damage. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. All right. So now let's come in here and, like, do some shit. <laughs> Maybe. Um, let's see. Sure. He can get he can get snap blade, I guess. I don't care. Um, what shit do you have? Honestly, it doesn't even really matter. None of this stuff. Yeah, really I have, I get so long. I don't remember what's yeah, good to put on for accessories. Yeah, and... yeah, none of the stuff really matters that much. I mean, you could kind of just generically look for strength, and be mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, it's fine. You can do some trishula. You can just uh, kind of do whatever. It doesn't matter. Ooh, crit. Yeah, this. Put this on it. Yeah, there we go. That'll give her some extra crit. Beautiful. You love to see it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, choker. You can give her choker. Yeah, there you go. More more critical rate. Cool. I'm not going to worry about the rest. You can you can finish building <laughs> units. Um, cool. And this, sure. You can have that. Oh, he doesn't have dual wield yet because you haven't built him. Okay, cool. He can have his blade then. Cool. Great. I don't care about the rest. We're already looking pretty good. Um... <laughs> Now let's come in here and let's sort this by skill cost and let's turn on his passives. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna okay, let you go ahead and turn on everybody else. I'm just gonna build out Levi quick, yeah, just to like fine. just to like show the difference quick. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do default. Okay, cool. Um, from here, we're gonna do. Sure, we'll put on some crit stuff because crit actually is good here since damage is like nerfed. Mm -hmm. So like crit stuff is actually good for damage. In this particular oh, case, is nerfed in the arena. Okay. Um, when you can get Human Slayer, high priority for arena, it's the best package in the game, and he gets it innately, okay. which is super good. And then God Slayer will be really worth too. Um, okay. Is there a lot of gods in the arena, or a lot of? Um, there's plenty. Yeah, there's there's oh. a good amount of machines too. You're not gonna have to worry for a while, but eventually, that it will be a thing. Um, fast critical here too. Cool. Um, then we're gonna do probably do pride for a, a bigger boost just because you're probably mm -hmm. going to nuke things anyway um let's see here pose of glory great um pose of honor why not it'll fuel some sharp eyes um let's see let's see da, 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 da. cool let's do a wheel sure let's give you all the skill charges beautiful and we still have lots of room you know we love to see it shockwave you teach good skills. You're very good at just broadly teaching the right things, which I really like. It makes it easy. It makes my life easier coming in here. Let me tell it, you. It helps that the event just gives you plus, you know, times ten. True. When you're running stuff. True. Uh, backstab. We're gonna do that. Um, spirit. When you get SM Theria, you put on Spirit Breath too, because that's free uh, skill charge. Oh yeah. As you do stuff. I remember that. Yeah. Um, Pose of Victory isn't bad either. Gain some. Some. Stuff and some things. Um, okay. This all seems fine. Can I do can I do more? I guess I can just throw stats on him at this point. Doesn't really matter. Um, slayers are obviously good, but you'll give him slayers eventually. I guess we can make him a little tankier. Royal armor, 50% chance to not take a critical. Pretty okay. Um, passive healing off proud force, why not? Um and sure, we'll boost some damage. Oh god, he just, he has so much room. You have so much room to grow. You have very much room to grow. Um, sure, we're, we're just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna boost some of this crap, I guess. I don't care. I really don't care. Okay, cool. So just building out him, putting gear on these guys, I didn't even upgrade their kits at all. Let's go see the difference that made. Let's even fight, like, an okay team. I'm not gonna fight V, though. We're not gonna do that. Not gonna What's do that to you. Um, v will just like completely stun the hell out of your team. All right, this might oh. go horribly, but we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not expecting much, but you know, at low levels, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so let's see here. Biggest threats, um, probably Luxaeus for sure. Sarah mm -hmm. will need to die so she can't heal things, but I'm gonna hope that. Um, Basically, me coming in with an S3 on Ravala, I'm hoping it's just going to kill all three of these on this side of the map. Look at that. Look at wow. look, look at that. It's wow. like magic. 
It's like magic. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Levi's silly. Okay, cool. Dope. So Mikasa can do that too. Just give her shit. Right. Um, I was expecting that to be slightly less impressive. Um, so that like when I give you spell render, it looks even more impressive. But you know. <laughs> so the thing spell render does. It is a formation, as you guessed. Um, oh, my camera is laggy. Um, or frozen. Okay. Looks like maybe it's working now. Wait, what? Your, yeah, your camera's frozen, I think. My camera's frozen, okay. Um, Actually, your video might be frozen. Video might be frozen, let's see here. It's just chugging, at least on my screen. Damn I mean, it. Not in Discord, but on YouTube. Why? Why are things awful? This is like frame, wow. frame. Wow, wow, it is just dead. It is so dead. I am so sorry, everybody watching this. All right, well, I'm going to keep doing this because this is for your benefit anyway. Hopefully other people will be able to, uh, you know, it's starting to get some benefit too. But All right, hopefully it'll be good. All right, so now that we did that, we're going to do this. This is the best investment ever. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to buy it for you because it's just worth Because yep. it makes all the rest of your farming go better. All right, so what does this shit do? Why do we spend 500 valuable things on this? Well, boost damage against sorcerers. Nice. Okay, cool. Silence research. So if anybody's auto-attacking, chance to silence them. Eh, nobody cares, but sure. Chance to evade magic. Generally also doesn't matter too much. Boost your mind. Okay, your proud force will be a little better. Battle start. Recover SCT. That's a pretty small line. Um, how much SCT? Um, well, this is 50% of your max stocks. Oh, wow. To everyone at battle start. <laughs> oh, so you saw so you saw when we... Oh, and then there's some negatives. You have lower defense. You take more damage from ranged attacks. But we don't care. We're just going to kill things anyway, so we don't care. So <laughs> the last one, we saw skill charge 1 left him... Got him 1 S1, and then quick trigger triggered on his S3, giving us an instant S3. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see what happens if we go into a na match now. Now with spell render, I don't care who we fight. Everybody's going to instantly die. If they wouldn't have already. Which at this early of PvP, like, for a pretty significant amount of time, you should be easily demolishing everything. Just put some crap on your other units too. But Levi by himself should just be insane. Oh my god. So look at all my... <laughs> you have some skills to use now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, That's really let's just go zoomy mode. I could just S3 things, but it's so fun to just see, see him zoom around at stuff. I'm going to spawn camp. And now she's got Galaxy coming in, so even if they wanted to fight back, they're just going to get knocked around by her magic. And it's just, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right. So there's some arena stuff. There you go. You're on, you're on your way. Um, you, right. You've got two top tier units. Um, you can add SM Theria to this mix too. Because again, she makes you faint immune. She resists damage to like um, uh, the enemy that's most frequent on the enemy team. Which is really, really cool. Um, she, just, she does so much great stuff for you. Every time she heals you, she gives you a temporary um, uh, barrier that people need to eat through. Otherwise, you have flinch resistance. So that's that's cool too. Just all sorts of good stuff. Um, let's see. Other things that you want. Um, run Pirate Ship. It's an auto-include on, on aggro teams. Okay. Um, let's see. That's not a bad pick. That's actually not a bad pick. Um, on her, this isn't a bad pick either, probably. Um, it's probably fine. Basically, just on somebody, use Pirate Ship. Um, okay. At, basically, at battle start, your entire team can't flinch for 10 seconds, which means if you have DPS units... Your opponents could be throwing things at you, too. If you don't have this, you could just get flinched and lose all your damage. This right. says for the first 10 seconds, you will be doing damage unless you're dead. Awesome. So, yeah. That just goes on anybody. I don't care who. Um, this is fine. This is fine. It could potentially silence someone. I'm not going to be picky on the rest of these. Um, like I said, eventually put Ghost Hime on somebody, too. Um, again, kind of like Pirate Ship. It can just kind of go on anybody. Um, right. but that's when, like, you're leveled up. Um, uh, where is this shit? Yeah, Ghost Team A. So, that's a good one. Other than that, you can look and explore and figure out other stuff that's good. Oh, Abandoned City. Abandoned City's really good. That's worth leveling up to. Um, this gives you... Okay, okay. 
Um, I mean, it's not like super broken because spell render exists now, um, but this mm -hmm. one gives you um, extra skill, still skill stocks as well, and all the stacks on top of spell render too. Okay. Um, so at max level, I think it gives you like an extra fifteen, which is pretty good. Um, but yeah, not that huge of a deal overall. But uh, yeah. Any other questions before we sign out of here? Uh, I think. So the God Forge that I can't see is because my alchemy is not high enough, not because I don't have Correct. I don't, I don't have the base weapon. Okay. Yes. Um, so if you're curious um, about some of those weapons, I'll send you a link, like I said, to Last Claudia Goldmine. If you just mm -hmm. go to, um, you can go to the equipment section and use the search bar mm -hmm. and just type God Forge, and it should filter out all the gear that you can make and craft in God Forge. Okay. Um, oh, arc extensions. What what should I really be picking? Oh for yeah, that? yeah yeah yeah. Um, so it really depends on the arc itself. Um, mm -hmm. so like in general, it's not a huge deal. What I usually try to look at first is like, is there something that I'm going to be using a lot? So like if I get a dupe of sandworm, dual wields the most valuable thing on this. In my opinion, I'm probably going to at least one time extend this to just increase okay. that multiplier. So it's super duper easy and cheap for me to just teach it to people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like to do that with a lot of my low end stuff too. Um, like, okay. uh, let's see, what's another good example? Um, oh, special boost, special boost, because this goes with slayers. It just, this mm -hmm. is how you get a hundred percent. It's 50% by default. This gives you another 50%. Um, so like I'd come in and I'd be like, okay, well let's make it easier to learn this and just bump up these stats more. Like just okay. increase that multiplier. So that's one way. That's one thing that I like to do. Um, mm -hmm. usually my higher priority anyway. Um, Another thing is obviously you could do stats. So like I'll do that if the rest of the things seem fine or if like there's already a decent enough multiplier that I don't care or maybe it's an SR arc that I equip all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Like maybe you really like Sword of Corpses and this buffs strength. So you say, okay, well, all my extensions, I just want to buff the strength as high as I want. Like mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal, but if you want to, sure, that's something you could okay. do. That's fine. Um, in the rare case that you have an arc skill, Always go into the arc skill. Okay. Um, because, like, they're all somehow nichely applicable. Um, so right. it's generally just more valuable to bump that up as much as you can. Um, another, like, weird random one is um, this one has an arc skill as well. When this is maxed out, the next 20 physical hits you would take, you nullify the damage of. <laughs> okay. Which, like, in some scenarios that doesn't really matter. But then in other cases, right. it's, it's really, really silly. Like, there's a Godforge yeah. boss where you fight a giant ant, and it more or less hits you, like, once with a really big attack and just one-shots you. If you run into it and aggro it, and then you use this, you basically become a god tank for half the match. And everybody gets okay. to freely attack it without threat of anybody dying, instead of her, like, really quickly wiping the party. It's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, I gotta look at these arc abilities. They were yeah. There's they, there's not many, but you can look. There's a little icon here that says arc skill. Right, right. Um, very few. I would say like probably ten or less arcs have arc skills. Here's a couple other uh, ones. Okay. Beast hunter is the most important. So if you have, I would say now that you have spell render, probably mm -hmm. buy SR Stardust out of um, the arena shop. Okay. Um, so you can fuel them into here. Stardust are used for this extension here. These are just uh, super rare. We don't see these very often. Um, unfortunately, but, uh, yeah, you can get, I think every season, which is like every month you can get like one, two, three, something like that out of the shop. So that's something you okay. can do if you're doing arena every day. Um, and then just watch for it in event shops and stuff as things come up. Okay. But yeah, in general, extensions don't matter much. They used to not exist in the game period. So like, it's right, just something a little yeah. extra to make your life easier. Like for me, after you get arcs to 100% and you get the boost in multiplier, if you can put a little bit extra on them, it gets to the point of when XP multipliers come up for training dungeons, you could just, like, put arcs on three people, run once, instantly train everything on the arc, rotate arcs to somebody else, instantly teach them anything. Kind of like what you did with Mikasa and Levi for this event, and Eren, mm -hmm. where you could just easily teach them. Eventually, ideally, you could just do that with anybody when those training dungeons come up, you know? And just makes okay. your life way easier, you know? So, yeah, that's the that's thing. Good. Otherwise, you can bump stats if you have nothing better to do. 
because you know right. stats are cool if you use the arc a lot so sure i suppose all right beautiful sounds good all right yeah, that looks pretty good all right well if you have any other questions